and a very funny fellow, as you've probably discovered if you've had occasion to listen to the radio or watch television. His wife, Edith Adams, is a singer, a good one too. Kovacs live in a duplex apartment on the 18th floor of this building that fronts Central Park in mid-Manhattan. As a matter of fact, they only moved in about a month ago. That they managed to move at all is something of an achievement, considering that Ernie starts his radio show at 6 in the morning and Edith goes on television at 7. Evening, Ernie. Evening, Ed. How are you? All right. Evening, Mrs. Kovac. <laughs> How are you, Ed? Nice Fine. to see you. <laughs> Ernie, have you settled down yet in your new apartment? Well, almost, Ed. We, uh, we've devoted uh, the last four weeks to going to auctions and buying anything that was broken <laughs> that we could get. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything that uh, looked like a great buy, we got. And uh, uh, gradually we're filling the place, but it, it's a little bit beyond us right now because uh, sometimes we have three truckloads coming in a week, and when they put the stuff around, you can't see it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's here someplace, I'm sure. I know that both of you have to get up early. Uh, do you have any sort of special eye-opener breakfast? Well, uh, I do, and it makes him terribly sick. <laughs> but uh, I like to cook up some wheat germs, like oatmeal. Yes. And uh, have that, and then I'll have sort of a raw egg with uh, blackstrap molasses and some uh, milk and beat that all up. And he stands there and sneers. Uh, of course, he has a big black cigar while he's doing it, but he stands there and sneers at me <laughs> while I eat this. Ooh, that <laughs> sounds repulsive to me. The cigar? Yeah. Uh, I, I feel rather sorry for people who are eating and listening to this program as we give this menu. <laughs> Ernie, uh, do you ever feel confined living in an apartment? No, uh, Ed, not this one. We, uh, we have a, a bunch of terraces. We have one that runs about 40 feet this way, and then we have one that goes about 20 that way, and then there's one on the lower floor that runs the length of the uh, other apartment. Uh, this is uh, a view looking down toward Central Park South. And... Uh, uh, of course, that's Central Park, the, the big black uh, block sort of at the bottom. And then looking over to the left, we get the Fifth Avenue, of course, and the reservoir. And in the morning, uh, when I get up at a quarter to four to do my radio show, and Edie gets up a little bit later, and we stand down here and watch the wrestlers and the boxers run around the reservoir. They train here. And this, of course, is one of the uh, exits coming out of the park. So it's not uh, actually like living uh, indoors at all. In fact, we have a little pool at the end of this for the children, Betty mm. and Kip. And they have quite a ball with the thing, and uh, the only thing is it's so windy up here that even on the hottest days, they get out of the pool, and uh, it's just a little bit cold. Oh, yeah. It stopped raining tonight, hasn't it? Yes, it has. It was raining earlier, but uh, everything's fine. I thought that one of the other stations had man managed to <laughs> uh, have this kind of weather, but uh, it seems we've sorted them in the end, and it's all clear now. Ernie, how did you ever get involved in this business of being a comedian, anyway? Well, um, I, I uh, used to do some ringside uh, radio uh, broadcasting for wrestling and I sent an audition to uh, uh, Philadelphia and uh, uh, to show how I could do the ringside wrestling and I uh, won the audition and got a cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's sort of business in a way and uh, and then from that uh, one day the chef didn't show up and it became uh, a comedy show. Everything burnt to pieces and uh, I think they thought I did it on purpose, and I thought this was kind of clever while I was really and sincerely trying to cook, but I never told them this until it was too late, and then I did a morning show and went on from there. Uh, Edie, does he ever try out his material on you? Well, yes, he does, but sometimes, you know, it's about the fifth dimension. It's the fifth joke removed, and I don't get it for about two or three hours, and then I'll burst out laughing. <laughs> Do you regard yourself as a good audience? Uh, sometimes a little too much so. I have a tendency to break up as we say, <laughs> and he has a tendency to lecture me about it, and he's entirely right, but I can't help it. Funny, I laugh. Thanks very much. I'm sorry. We've run out of town. Thanks, Edie and Ernie Kovacs. For